Hey y'all, Doug with Danny in the Garage. I have something that I am very excited about today. I bought myself a locker for the uh, back uh, Chrysler 8 and a quarter differential that's in my Cherokee. Uh, the install video on this is absolutely coming. I gotta collect a few other pieces. When I have that video, it'll be linked up there in the corner. In the meantime, I thought it would be interesting and educational to dig into exactly how an automatic locker works. Uh, because it's very different from a selectable locker and I don't know that a lot of people know. Before we dig into this, uh, let's go check out what your standard Jeep solid rear axle looks like. Alright, now what we have here is a Dana 35. Before we go any further, I'll say this is a junk Dana 35. So if you see stuff like these chipped uh, spider gears and rusty carrier bits, uh, yeah, this isn't going in a vehicle ever again. This is just a a boat anchor at this point, but it's going to help me illustrate a point. This is a C-clip axle, which means that there are C-clips on the end of your axle shafts that hold it in as opposed to a retaining plate. If you have a baseline uh, or possibly you know, most Jeeps from the 90s and early 2000s, you have a C-clip axle, either this Dana 35 or a Chrysler 8 and a quarter. The uh, Wranglers, the TJs had them. All the Grand Cherokees, uh, ZJ, WJ, WK, all had them. My wife's commander had them. All the Cherokees had them. The Liberty had them. You know, they're, they're fine enough axles for riding around town, but they are, in fact, what's called an open axle, an open differential. I'd love to explain to you uh, exactly how a differential works, but there's a video out there on the Internet that does a way better job than I could ever do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to link that up in the corner. It's an old, I think, an advertisement video from uh, GM in like the 60s, it's all in black and white. Uh, I highly recommend you check it out. Even if you think you know what differentials do, just watch it, such a good video. There's no way I could ever recreate a video that good. So uh, go look at that, then come back and we'll talk a little more about this. The reason I have this uh, Dana out here is to explain better what a lunchbox locker is, right? Why is it called that? Well, what is a lunchbox? A lunchbox is a carrying case for something uh, you put something new in it every day, but you always keep the actual case. Well, that's the idea with a lunchbox locker. Unlike some other um, more advanced forms of locker where you get a whole new carrier, which is this bit right here, um, you keep the carrier with the lunchbox locker. You don't even have to pull your differential or your carrier out of the vehicle. All right, You can put a lunchbox locker in your vehicle with your vehicle in the driveway up on jack stands and your carrier still in your differential. What you do is... See all these spider gears? Uh, without getting into it, this is what drives you know, your axles. Uh, the power comes in through your uh, pinion gear attached to your yoke and your drive shaft. It gets transferred to this ring gear. This ring gear then acts upon these various spider gears. They are held in with, well, these top two are held in by this cross pin and are attached to your carrier that way. And then the side two are attached to your axles. They are splined and your axles go into them. Uh, what you do is you drop out this center pin here. All right, that allows you to remove, and you, you pull your axles out, that allows you to remove all of these uh, spider gears. You've taken out the insides of your carrier and you're putting something new into it. In this case, your carrier is the lunch box and the locker is the lunch. It's kind of a goofy name, but that's really why they call it that. Um, so uh, this carrier is going to stay, your ring gear is going to stay, uh, you're not going to have to reset up your axle afterwards, backlash and all that, which you would with some other more advanced types of lockers. Uh, let's go back into the garage. I think you know, I just wanted to pull this out to illustrate what you're going to be doing with this locker. Now the one I have is for a Chrysler 8 and a quarter. It's much bigger than, than this, so don't get hung up. This is a very small carrier compared to what that one's going to be going into. So let's go back in the garage and we'll open up that thing. I've been dying to open that box up, see what's in there, and I'll try to explain how it works. It really is a fascinating little mechanism, uh, these automatic lunchbox lockers. Alrighty friends, here are the components that make up a lunchbox locker. This is going to be the same on a locker, like the one I've got. It's going to be the same on a Spartan locker. Uh, some Detroit lockers, some Yukon lockers, some Lockrite lockers, uh, any of these real inexpensive automatic uh, differential lockers are going to be the same. All right, they're going to have the exact same components. They look exactly the same. They're put together the same. These are going to be your cam gears. There's two each of those. These are going to be your spacers. Uh, these also retain the C-clips. I'm going to go into this a little more in a minute. These are very important. These are the pins and springs. These kind of 
keep tension on the system, and that's really what allows it to work. And then uh, the last piece here are going to be your drive gears. All right? Here's how it all goes together. These drive gears, obviously you can see they're splined. Uh, they go in place of the um, side spider gears, and they engage your, um, uh, your axle shafts there. These are the middle, these are called cam gears. These are the middle pieces. You can see the uh, center pin goes down through these. And you'll notice the hole for the center pin isn't exactly round. It's pointed and, and oblong. And that is an incredibly important feature uh, of this piece. This is what allows it to lock uh, when you add tension to the system. All right? So you got it all put together like this. And this is this is what you sneak down inside of your old carrier. This is the lunch in the lunchbox locker, you know. This all takes the place of your spider gears. Let me explain how this works. Now, it'd be a lot easier to show you if I had a center pin for an eight and a quarter, but I don't right now. So because of the size of the center pin, this is not how it sits in the motor. It sits one more thing i got to show you. <laughs> Sorry. Can you see down in that hole? Can you see how the spacers kind of cut off the under bit right there? What that means is when you have the center pin in, these sides are pushed out. All right, you see that? That's very important. These sides ride out here, and what they do is they're able to ratchet. All right? Uh, they're able to slide so that uh, when you're turning, your outside tire can move faster than your inside tire. They allow for some um, slippage because they're, they're pushed out just enough by these spacers. All right. So in normal driving conditions, these are essentially open. They're riding out here like this, and uh, they slide, they ratchet. And if you've ever heard uh, this style lunchbox locker, it sounds like a roulette table when it's turning. Tick, 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 tick. And that's these just slipping past each other. And that's totally normal. That's how they're designed to work. They are very loud. They're very noisy. All right. Um, what happens though is when stress is put on the system, what I mean by that is this. Stress on a system in this case is one wheel's turning faster than the other or your foot is really mashed into the gas. Either of those two situations put extra uh, energy into the carrier and what is attached to the carrier the center pin so that center pin puts a little extra tension up on this oblong hole and what that does when it's pushed into this sort of point it's it forces these two out all right so the slack that was be ta being taken up over here now gets closed up by the center pin hole and these all lock together remember you've got the center pin in here so this these two are always moving as, as a unit. And now these outside ones, which had slack to slip past each other, are now locked into place so that slack can be in the middle. All right, that's how this works. That's where the magic is here. Um, so under normal driving conditions, these outside, your, your uh, drive gear, your cam gear, they move just fine. Whenever your center pin is torqued so that it's putting more force on this cam gear, that's why it's called cam gear, it pushes in these lock, these are attached to your uh, drive shaft, so essentially your two drive shafts are locked together, and now you have more traction. Um, the reason this is ideal for somebody in my situation who's got a plow vehicle, uh, for somebody who's got an off-roader that they have to drive to the trail, you know, not a trail rig, is um, if you just have a locker, a selectable locker, this is an automatic locker, if you have a selectable locker, your axle is either locked together or it is not locked together. There's no accounting for road conditions like this one, right? Um, now, your axles locked together is really great off-road if you're uh, climbing through the mud, climbing over rocks, but on the road it'll cause you to lose control pretty quick. It'll cause you to wear out tires because now your outside and inside tire uh, can't move at different speeds when turning, and there's a good chance you're going to break something. It puts way too much strain on the system. So, there are other styles of lockers. Um, I have Verilox in my WJ. They are a clutch pack style locker. Maybe someday we'll go over those. But if you have a Jeep uh, from the 
uh, 90s, early 2000s, and you want to have some kind of automatic locker so you can drive on-road, off-road, this is your best bet. And uh, these, they make these relatively inexpensively. Laka, I think, is the most inexpensive brand. Uh, they're anywhere from two to three hundred dollars. Uh, then you can go up to Spartan. Um, they're around four hundred, something like that. And then if you really want to pay the money, you can buy a Yukon. They're about five hundred dollars. I've got a fly in here that's absolutely driving me crazy. I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm about to try to <laughs> spray him with brake clean if I can catch him. Driving me freaking crazy. Get out of here. Trying to do something. Where were we? Uh, so I hope that explains how these work. Let me explain these pins real quick. You put a pin in each of these holes and it corresponds with one of these slots. That fly, man, driving me crazy. Um, you got a pin in one of these holes and then a spring in one of these slots. And what that does is just puts a little bit of tension on the system and it doesn't obviously force these to remain locked. It just puts enough tension on the system so that it wants to return to center. That's why you hear the clicking when these go by, uh, when you're turning, because there's just enough tension on the system to kind of keep it sort of engaged, but not enough so that it stays locked. All right. The only thing that keeps it locked is when enough tension is put on the cross pin to force these apart. All right. Um, a lot of people, if you if your pins go bad, if they wear out, you will destroy your locker. So I hope I gave you a pretty good idea of how these things work. Uh, it really is, if you think about it, it's a pretty wild design. Like whoever thought of this is just a freaking genius, you know? Um, and to be able to machine it and sell it at that price, like that is really a godsend to us weekend warrior jeepers. Uh, not too long ago, I did a video on the worst mods you can do on a 4x4. Uh, this right here would go on the opposite list, right? This is one of the best things you could spend your money on if you have a weekend warrior Jeep uh, with open differentials. You know, save the money on the Stinger or the friggin' uh, Snorkel. Go ahead and buy yourself one of these. You can put it on in your driveway uh, with relatively common tools in an afternoon, all right? Uh, like I said, I hope I explained it. Hope I explained it well. If you do have any questions, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. If you liked the video, found it amusing, educational, uh, I hope you found it educational. By all means, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there is going to be an install coming on this. I just have to wait for some more parts to come in. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.